Bosnia and Herzegovina is a country in Southeast Europe, and soon it might be breaking up into two, creating a new sovereign nation in the continent, but not into Bosnia and Herzegovina. Those would remain together. In fact, these two terms merely serve to divide the two geographical areas that make up the country, Bosnia, which is the inland region of the country, and Herzegovina, which is the smaller southern region. No, the potential breakup would be between the country's two constituent autonomous areas, Bosnia and Herzegovina and Srpska. Now, this video isn't in support or opposition of this possibility. I just want to try to understand why this can happen and how. So to do this, we'll take a look at three things. One, how Bosnia exists as a state. Two, why it is that way. And three, why it is now at risk of breaking up. Keep in mind, I learned about this topic as I made the video after reading a news story about it. So if you notice any mistakes in my description of it, feel free to let me know in the comments. A part of the Balkans and one of the states that came into existence with the breakup of Yugoslavia in 1992, Bosnia isn't just a single country. It's more than that. During the times of Yugoslavia and even before with the Austro-Hungarian Empire, all these Western Balkan nations existed under the same union. Even if they had internal borders, this caused the mixing of various nationalities and ethnicities within the same territories, and Bosnia was one of those. So we need to understand that today, the country is home to three main ethnic groups, the constituent peoples of the country according to its constitution. They are the Bosniaks, which are the largest group, the Serbs, which are the second largest, and the Croats in third. Bosnia even has a three-member presidency made up of one member from each of the three major groups. However, the central government's power is highly limited as the the country is largely decentralized, and it is made up of two autonomous entities, which represent the two major ethnic groups, the Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina, for Bosnians and Croats too, and the Republika Srpska. Oh, there's also this third very small one called the Briko District, which is ruled by both the Federation and the Republic together. Before it was created, 48% of its territory was part of one and 52% of the other, but it seems to be more of a shared internal border region from what I could understand, and it also unites the two halves of Republika Srpska. Together, these two make up Bosnia as a country. The two regions are given wide autonomy, but keep some joint institutions, including the army, the top judiciary, and the tax administration. So why is it like this? We don't have many countries, or even any other ones I can think of, that are divided like this. It all seems to come from a specific historic event, the Bosnian War. The war was part of the breakup of Yugoslavia, a Balkan Union that consisted of the current countries of Slovenia, Croatia, Bosnia, Serbia, Montenegro, Northern Macedonia, and Kosovo from 1918 to 1992. When it began breaking apart and following the Slovenian and Croatian secessions, Bosnia decided to hold a referendum and declare independence as well. But there was an issue. The three groups we saw earlier were already the main ones. In addition to their nationality differences, there were also religious ones, and each of them wanted something different out of this situation. The population was divided into 44% Bosniaks, many of which Muslim, 33% Serbs, many of which Orthodox, and 17% Croats, many of which Catholic. While the Bosniaks wanted an independent Bosnia focused on their nationality, the Serbs that lived in the area did not, either wanting a solution that granted them full autonomy too, or to remain in union with Serbia, which was still part of Yugoslavia, while Croats also wanted their autonomy or independence or even an eventual union with Croatia. This disagreement then escalated into an all-out, very aggressive war. I won't get into the details of the conflict and the terrible terrible things that happened in it, but it's just important that you understand that it took place in order to understand the solution it resulted in. On one side of the conflict was the Yugoslav army unit stationed in Bosnia, which then became the army of the Republika Srpska. On the other was Bosnia Herzegovina and initially also the Croatian Defense Council, although soon after these became a third side of the conflict. In 1994, the Washington Agreement was signed, declaring a ceasefire between the Croats and the Bosniaks. Under the agreement, the combined territory held by the Croat and Bosnian government forces was divided into 10 autonomous cantons, establishing the Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina and ending the Croat-Bosniak War. But the conflict with the Serbs continued, and initially, although being military superior due to the weapons and resources provided by their allies, the Serbs eventually lost momentum with this recovered alliance between the two other groups. In 1995, NATO also intervened against the Republika Srpska, which led to the ending of the war and the signing of the Dayton Peace Accords. Through 
their representatives and along with the leaders of the US, France, the UK, Germany, Russia and the European Union, the three sides agreed to peace and to the creation of a single sovereign state known as Bosnia and Herzegovina, but composed of two autonomous parts, the largely Serb populated Republic of Srpska and the mainly Bosniak Croat populated Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina. And so it has remained over the past 26 years up to today. The Bosnia Herzegovina part of the country is still divided into these 10 cantons, each with a Croatian and Bosnian name and where the balance of percentage of each people varies depending on the canton. While the federation remains divided into the 10 cantons, the Republic is fairly centralized at an internal level only then being divided into municipalities. In the Federation of Bosnia Herzegovina, 70% of the people are Bosniaks, 22% Croats, and 2% Serbs, a total of 2.2 million. While in Republika Srpska, 81% are Serbs, 14% Bosniaks, and 2% Croats, a total of 1.2 million. The areas of the two regions are roughly the same, 26,000 square kilometers for one and 25,000 for the other. Although only the Federation has access to the sea, the Republic is landlocked and also separated in half, with that third Breko district joining the two halves. So now that we've understood how the country exists and how its territorial and political division is and why that is the case, why is the solution at risk of coming to an end? And why are these two constituent parts of the Federation at risk of Separation. On November 2nd of 2021, the chief international representative in Bosnia issued a warning that the country is at a real risk of breakup, and even worse, a potential risk of return to conflict. In a report to the UN Security Council, Christian Schmidt said, the prospects of further division and conflict are very real. If the Bosnian Serb leader withdraws Serb troops from the Bosnian army and creates a separate Serb force. It's important to point out, however, that the Serb leader rejected the idea of leading a separatist movement and some say this is being used as a pretext to turn away attention from the other important issues the country leaders have been struggling with. But it seems that, at least according to the news sources I read, again I have no first-hand information on this issue, but they state that for the past years, the Serb representative of the three-party presidency has been advocating for the separation of Republika Srpska and potentially its union with Serbia. And according to these same news reports, the leaders of the Republika Srpska have pledged that their local parliament would, by the end of November declare the creation of its own army, intelligence unit, tax authority, and judiciary. If this threat is real, and it is in fact carried out, then the only three common aspects uniting the Federation of Bosnia Herzegovina and the Republika Srpska would disappear, and there would be nothing uniting them, effectively creating a new country in Europe. Assuming they would remain independent, being successful at doing so, and not choosing to unite with Serbia, who along with Russia seem to be among the countries the local ruler counts as his allies. This new country would have a GDP of 6.7 billion, subtracted from Bosnia's current 21 billion. International peacekeeping duties in Bosnia are currently the task of a European force that is only 700 soldiers strong and the 1995 peace deal is always under observation by international representatives such as the one who wrote this report. The mandate for the EU force was up for renewal recently and it was only passed by the UN Security Council with the removal of this warning report from its text, otherwise Russia threatened to veto it, apparently in an effort to undermine the UN representative's authority in observing the keeping of the peace deal's terms. Whether internal and or international diplomacy will be enough to cool down the tension in Bosnia and prevent its breakup remains to be seen. According to the UN representative, should the armed forces of Bosnia and Herzegovina splinter into two or more armies, the level of international military presence would require reassessment in order to keep the 1995 peace deal in effect. A European Union diplomat added, we have forgotten about the Western Balkans, which are still a powder keg. It seems that the reality is the conflict from the 1990s may have never truly been resolved, it just evolved into a situation where the balance of forces allowed the reaching of a peace deal, proposing a peaceful solution, but perhaps one that doesn't, or at least so far hasn't, truly resolved the underlying issues that are the differences between the peoples of this country. Although we must also consider a possibility that the people on either side want nothing but to live at peace, and it is merely their leaders who are failing to find a solution, allowing it to escalate into a more serious situation that in reality nobody would want. Again, I'm not in favor or opposition to any of these situations. All we can hope for is that any issue is always resolved through diplomatic means and no military conflict arises from them. 
resulting in the best possible situation for all the peoples that live in the area. Thanks so much for watching this video. Did you notice any mistakes in my description of this topic? Do you have any additional information about it? Or do you have any opinions about it? Let me know in the comments below. Remember to subscribe if you want, and I will see you next time for more general knowledge.